We are live in the studio. It looks familiar, doesn't it? This is my home studio called my living room in Canada. And I'm here with Hal Peller in Brooklyn. Yo, 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 you got Brooklyn in the house. Oh, if I wouldn't <laughs> have had the video, I would have thought you were like a rapper, Mr. Pal Hal. Oh. <laughs> Even your name raps. <laughs> yeah. My mother named us all, gave us all nicknames so nobody else would. <laughs> So my brother Jay, I'm Hal. Huh. Short names. So she could scream from far away. Yeah. Still uh, mixes us up. She does? Yeah. <laughs> Jay Hal. <laughs> Jay Hal. Yeah. And then we had Pogo, our dog. Pogo. So she yeah, so she'd go through the whole litany before she'd get to Hal. Oh, yeah, totally. And I was the oldest. I was the first. Yeah. Uh, was that good? Did you turn into a successful airline pilot or what, or doctor, what you're supposed to? <laughs> no, I'm the only one who didn't graduate college. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, my brother is a law professor at Georgetown, and my mom passed the bar at age 57. Hmm. Got a job as a lawyer at age 61. Wow. Stepped down, and she lives in Atlanta, Georgia, and stepped down as a, a judge in workers' comp at 73. Wow. Which is how old I am now. You're 73? Yeah. Well, I, was I can't believe it math. either. What? I was trying to do the math. You wrote that in 81, you started improv, and I was born in 83. So I was like, oh, my gosh, she doesn't look like he's my age plus 20, 30 years. <laughs> yeah, 40. 40. What? You started improv when you were 40? No. Wait. 81. 81. Oh, yeah, I'm 40. <laughs> More or less. Okay. Wow. Okay, so instead of becoming a doctor or a lawyer or passing the bar, you passed the lean. Yeah, I'm Tell lean me, six sigma certified. It sounds like karate. I don't it know why. It is. It's Japanese. That's why. Oh. It came from Japan. Oh, tell me more. Yeah. And so lean is a process to improve processes. And I do it for pretty much for the home building industry. Okay. So I travel all over North America and I create, I, I facilitate Kaizen, which is the lean event to lean up their processes. And I, I create a lean team from the builder side made up of purchasing and construction and warranty people. And then I have them listen to their experts mm -hmm. who are the folks who build their houses, the plumbers, the electricians, the framers, HJC. And that's what I, that's pretty much what lean is, is listening to their experts. Because who knows better than the folks who, who do it day in and day out. So, so experts don't use lean or you have the assumption that every expert has another expert that could advise them. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're experts because they, they do it. That's what makes them expert. Oh, so and practical. lean. Yeah. Yeah. Lean is, identifying things that are that do not add value in the process. So go yeah. from point A to point B, mm -hmm. say it takes eight steps to do that. <clears throat> it's all about workflow and time, mm -hmm. how long it takes to get from point A to point B, how long mm -hmm. it takes to go from dig to a completed home and mm -hmm. hand the customer the keys. Mm -hmm. So getting from point A to point B, let's say to build a wall, it takes eight steps. And so the expert on that would be the person who, a carpenter who builds the wall. He's the expert. He does it. And we identify the eight steps. But he says, you know, this step right here doesn't really add value. Hmm. And the customer still pays for it, but it's hmm. not adding value. Hmm. So let's remove that step. Hmm. And now it's seven steps. And we identify the things that are wasteful talking to the, the the experts yeah and they tell us how we're damaging their bottom line so so you are a lean consultant who comes in calls the people who are experts looks at the processes and then cuts the fat that's exactly right it takes oh. about five days oh, okay. for a lean kaizen kaizen is a japanese word made up of two words, Kai, Zen. Kai is change, Zen is good. So <laughs> good change. Oh, that's beautiful. 
Yeah, it really is. But that's a small part of what I do. And it's only because I, I was in the construction business yeah. for 20 years in New York City. That's why I have wow. credibility. Wow. But I use improvisation to help the lean team yeah. understand the uh, where, to be able to listen to the the um, mm. their experts. Mm. So you use yeah. improv mostly as a tool for increased listening skills. Listening skills, yeah, and and body language, mm. because the the trades come in to the meetings. Uh, we interview twenty three trades an hour each, and they're. They've got a room full of high hit, heavy hitters. And so there, there's a lot of fear in there. You can feel it yeah. when they come in there. And I encourage the lean team to, sh to let them talk, keep them talking, because yeah. there's a nugget of information in there hmm. that, that, that will save them millions of dollars. And we do identify millions of dollars of waste at every single lean event. It never failed. The process works. But I use improvisation to improve the lean process. Improvisation is a process. Huh. And when you, I've been doing improv for maybe 10 years, much, much, much less than you. And when I first started it, I asked, I was curious to ask all the experts, like you guys have been doing it for much longer and our, our leaders in our industry. What does improv mean to you? And I got about a hundred people to give me their word. And my word was listen. And of course, almost everybody had a different word for that. And now 10 years later, for me, I have learned how to listen better to myself and to other people. And now for me, improv doesn't represent that anymore. And so oh. it's funny. <laughs> improv is a tool to get something. And so you've really identified that <clears throat> as one of your tools in that bag that you bring in to save the, uh, the construction industry tons of money. Do Are you very clear that it's just a tool? It's not like a philosophy that you're bringing in or do you... I, I, I don't tell them that we're doing improvisation. Oh, you don't? Oh. Because that, that's a fearful thing. Yeah, okay. And a lot of people are afraid of it. Mm. I just use it. Gotcha. And I do improv games. So okay. that's, that's you know, I tell them I'm a, an imp, uh, imp, applied improvisation facilitator, but we're not going to do improv anymore. <laughs> so liar, we're, liar, pants on fire. That's right. <laughs> And do they find out at the end? They go, hey, I've watched Whose Line Is It Anyway? I think we're today. Is that how they talk? Yeah. No, I, I work all over North America. I'm up in Canada, too. Oh, how do we talk up here? Like this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we say sorry a lot. <laughs> we do say that a lot. Okay. So, but joke aside, do you sometimes get exposed and people are like, hey, I think that was improv? Or they just go, oh, these were cool exercises, and now I like get what that other guy is saying. Great job, Hal. Yeah, that's what happens. Is that they, you know, because when you, the improvisation is a process. I have the top three rules of improvisation. I tell them my top three rules. Okay, tell me. I tell them. Okay, it's I always make positive choices. So if I'm in a scene with, on stage and somebody offers me a cup of coffee, I go yes. Because if I say no, click the door shut. Now what do we do? We well, we panic. Yeah. But if I say yes, the doors open up, and I can go through those doors. And I go, oh, I smell cinnamon, and there's lipstick on my cup, and I can keep <laughs> the story going. Mm, yeah. Right. <laughs> and it's not my shade, but <laughs> but uh, so we need to keep them talk the 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 trades talking, and yeah. so make positive choices, yeah. and accept that what you're telling you is true. Because mm -hmm. even if it's not true, it's their perception. Mm. It's their truth. Mm. So yes. And mm. that's mm -hmm. one rule. The second rule is we solve problems in the moment. Mm. And uh, we know that you're in the moment because you can't physically be in the past. And you can't <laughs> physically be in the future. You can only physically be in this moment right here, right now. Mm. And so I have them understand that we do things we internalize our knowledge and we do things in the moment without thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And that is, we're going to use the resources that are right here, right now in this mm -hmm. moment mm -hmm. to help solve the problem. Mm -hmm. So 
like a great basketball player will do behind the back pass because he knows where all his play teammates are on the court. And if he stopped the thinking about it, it'd be too late. Hmm. Hmm. And so that's the second rule. We all do things in the moment. You know, you've driven your car, talked on your Bluetooth, and, and drinking a cup of coffee, and 20 minutes later you're at your at your destination and you have no idea what happened during those 20 minutes. Yeah. You just magically at your destination. Yeah. You're in the moment. Hmm. The number one rule, and all rules in improv can be broken except for this one rule. Oh yeah? Yeah. Hmm. All rules can be broken except for this one rule. Hmm. Make the other person look great. So it's not about me, it's about you. Uh, and what do you need to look great? And so you have four or five people on stage all trying to make the other person look great. And you know that in your heart that you can take a huge risk and you cannot fail because <laughs> whatever you do will be justified by everybody else on stage. No wow. matter what you do. So that's a very powerful thing that you cannot <laughs> fail. And I tell the team, we need to make the trades look great. <laughs> and that's our job. Wow. It's beautiful. Yeah, no, it really is great. It's a very positive culture. And that's what happens is it creates a positive culture. And that's what I love about improvisation. That's what I love about going to the AIM conferences. Yeah. I just, I'm, with a, I'm with my tribe. Yes. Yes. Um, Hal and I are, to those of you watching, Hal and I are in a, um, a network of 8,000 of us on the Facebook page called the Applied Improvisation Network. And that's where we met. And that's why he's here because that conference is the best thing I do my entire year. And I, right. and I, these humans, can you imagine guys, a room of 200, 300 of <laughs> Hal and I, who live <laughs> those values. We want to make our partner look good. We try and be in the present and we try and be positive and add to the conversations. You know, like if you live an improv lifestyle, I, I'm sure my life is fabulous because 10 years ago I started doing improv. I don't think I would have turned out this well mom and dad without it do you see <laughs> transformation if you work with a team longer or have you seen that in your oh, life yeah. no i do i see transformation because that's what improvisation is improvisation is transformation violas bowen said it and and so when we when i was on the shift team a, a group of consultants i was the only applied impro improviser hmm. and everybody would look to me for hmm. guidance and yeah. and how we're going to make our a customer is happy and i i just i i lead by example hmm. with those top three rules hmm. well, these are life rules for you oh yeah it, it it really did change my life it gave me a, a purpose and it gave me uh when i teach my kid how to drive and i there was a guy in the in the right lane wanted to get, get got get stuck in his lane and needed to get in i said Kevin, make him look great. What are you oh. going to do to make him look great? He went, oh, I'm going to let him in. Oh, I'm going to cry. I have goosebumps. I never thought of how improv and I'm not a parent, so I, I don't have all these teaching moments, I suppose. But yeah. I'm so drawn to it, and that's so beautiful. Make them look good. Huh. I had taught public speaking for a while, and I, and I said, you know, they tell me, well, I'm up on the stage by myself. Hmm. And I go, who, who's going to make me look good? I said, well, who's the worst person on your team? Who's the best person on your team? You. And so you have to get out of your own way and not think about you. It's about the audience. You need to make the audience look great. And mm. what do you need to make the audience look great? Mm. They need that information that you're going to talk about. Mm. Mm. Wow. So that puts a whole new spin on the engagement because i learned how to be an engaging keynote speaker from the improv world and you've obviously learned this much earlier than i have but hearing you say that it's like when we when the applied improvisers go on stage there's always interaction with the audience we never monologue at any of our conferences whereas if you yeah. go to almost any other industry conference great people great speakers but they're always missing that that fundamental <laughs> rule hmm. yeah and i always say be a, don't be a sage on the stage. Be a guide on the side. Ha, ha, ha. Wow. I, and that's I, what I am. <clears throat> I facilitate. I'm not teaching anybody anything. 
Yeah. If they learn, that's great. Hmm. It's what hmm. they take away. Hmm. That's that's such a shift, right? Like make that's your audience shift. look good instead of you look good. And there's that's so right. much ego in our industry, Hal, right? Like Unfortunately. It's horrifying. I'm horrified with myself and how my ego has grown. <laughs> and so wow. I'm going to take this to to help me with that. It's it's all about the audience and with these three rules that you live by and have been influencing, inspiring people for the last 40 years doing. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. So the engage uh, the the uh, shift conference is that what it's called in Barcelona? Yeah. yeah, we're we're trying to shift how people view change because most people don't want change, but you're teaching people that go with the change in the moment, right? Oh, and if, if you don't change, you go, you're you're like a shark in water. You'll die. <laughs> Especially these big corporations, they have to be continually improving. Otherwise, though, there's the competition will just run right over. And so most people don't want to change because it makes you uncomfortable because it's unknown. But if you follow these three rules, it's not so scary because, right. or what could you say to the viewers? Well, the, on the, 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 the team is working together and holding okay. each other accountable. So okay. you're not alone. Yeah. And all trying to make each other look great. Hmm. And if we fix this problem, like the, the trade, the plumber brought up an, uh, an idea that that uh, um, he can't work in this in the house with the with the uh, electrician. They get in each other's way. They work much faster if they're in the house alone. So we fix that problem, then then he'll be happy. We made him look great, hmm. and that's hmm. what we do. We fix problems. Hmm. That's what the lean process does. Lean. Okay, so. The word was ka kazen, something like that. Kaizen. Kaizen, and then in English we change it to lean because the it's no fat, no extra on it. Is that? The, That's right. We, we eliminate, we identify, and eliminate the waste. The waste. The okay. Waste. Is there, These are the uh, waste that are, don't add value. No. Okay. On a selfish note, is there a personal application to lean that you can do to your personal problems, like? Yeah. Is, is, that, is there a philosophy there? I could look at my life and the things I do and cut out the habits that are not adding to me. That's exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. But the the one of the things is well catered. These events are well catered. <laughs> and so I I get the lean bump after a week of lean. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking lean lean chicken no fat no thanks my <laughs> leaning up my life making it more lean mm, yeah something. anything that doesn't add value to you doesn't add value to me Whew, lots of things that's why i created exactly. this shift conference because i'm like there's a lot so i told my mom i'm doing a conference on good habits and she's like and you're teaching it like yeah you know, sort of mom and i'm like no thank you very much i know that i have some things i need to shift thank you for telling me that's 41 <laughs> years too. And that's why I'm interviewing people, humbly interviewing people so that I can shift some things in my life that I've been struggling with for the last freaking 24 to 41 years, like donuts. Oh, oh yeah, I like donuts. You like donuts? donuts. <laughs> New York donuts. I have a sweet tooth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, well, too bad you will not be there, but I will see you in Florida next year at the Applied Improv yes. Network Conference. Yep, yep. Florida has lots of buffets. It's my favorite state. <laughs> you don't know that? Right. They don't have abortion, but they have lots of buffets. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. Okay. Hal, my pal, thank you. That was really cool. Sure, Jessica, anytime. <laughs> Thanks. See ya. Bye bye. Bye.